bring in Frank St. John, Chief Operations Officer for Lockheed Martin. We were just talking about that this show is as much about defense and military spending as it is about commercial aviation. Give me some sense from your perspective, the growth we've seen in defense spending. How far out in the future do you believe this percentage growth annually continues? Well, hey, Phil, good morning. It's great to be here with you today at the Paris Air Show. And I would just say that what we've seen, especially in the last 16 months since the uh, invasion of Ukraine, is a steady increase in demand, uh, not only here in, uh, in Europe, but also around the world. And we're starting to see contracts come in now that are going to see us ramping up our production rates over the next two to three years all across our portfolio. And we anticipate that maintaining for at least five years to come after that. You know, one of the questions, and you got some of these yesterday, were about the F-16 and whether or not NATO and the allies within NATO say, yes, we are going to send some of our F-16s over to assist Ukraine. And that Ukraine will have to train pilots. Where does Lockheed Martin sit within the framework of assisting Ukraine with pilot training if that is, in fact, what a number of countries do? Right. So the issues of third-party transfer of F-16s and training of pilots and sustainment are all being worked out currently between the U.S. government, the government of Ukraine, and the countries that would be donating those aircraft. And once those requirements are defined, Lockheed Martin stands ready to modify aircraft, provide training solutions as we have for 16 other nations, provide sustainment of those platforms, and uh, as necessary, build new F-16s to backfill those that have been uh, donated. You mentioned about the production rates and how they're increasing. You're at a point right now with the Joint Strike Fighter where the next tranche is ready to be delivered. But at this point, the Defense Department says, you know what, we don't think the capabilities, at least they're not up to our standards yet, but that may change, let's say, six months, eight months down the road. How much does that pinch the cash flow near term for you? So as you know, Phil, F-35 is the world's dominant fighter, uh, 17 countries and growing. And we are currently delivering our Lot 14 aircraft, which are in what we call the TR-2 configuration. Those are going to deliver out about the middle of this year. The TR-3 configuration is currently in flight testing, and that is going to add significantly more processing, memory, display capability for future mission equipment that is going to allow the F-35 to pace the threat well into the next decade. That flight testing is going to wrap up near the end of this year, and at that point we believe we're going to start delivering those aircraft uh, to the U.S. as well as our allies. We're ramping up to a peak rate of about 156 aircraft a year, and we think over the two-year span we're going to see just pretty much in line with our predictions relative to revenue, cash, cash flow, flow, and so forth. Quickly have to ask you, uh, production and manpower and sourcing, the supply chain, is it improving? Well, one of the lessons we've learned since the pandemic and also that's been exacerbated by the last 16 months is that we have a relatively fragile defense industrial base. And we've spent many decades making that as efficient as it could possibly be. Over the last year, we've started to make investments creating alternate sources, uh, becoming more resilient and more agile. And we're starting to see the supply chain come along and ramp up with us to meet the demand of the future. And uh, we're just very happy to be here at the show talking to some of those international suppliers that are going to be a part of this uh, more resilient uh, base going forward. It's improving. 